Hey everybody, welcome to The Real United States. And this is our first episode ever from the great state of Ohio, here in the Midwest of the United States. And uh, we're here, I, I'm actually in front of the Singletary House Museum. And uh, interestingly enough, I have no idea what the Singletary's house claim to fame is. Um, but I'm not here to talk about this museum. I'm here to talk about this whole area. And we're actually in a small community of about 12,000 plus souls um, called Streetsboro. And it's in north central Ohio, north eastern Ohio maybe. Um, not terribly far from Akron um, or Youngstown. But uh, we're just, I mean literally just off of the Ohio Turnpike, which is Interstate 80. And uh, it's, like I say, it's a little community that doesn't have any real industry and grew up in probably the last few decades mostly as a commercial center for this area with a lot of retail outlets, you know, the, the big places you, you'd be familiar with, you know, department stores and Oh, lumber yards and those sorts of places, building centers, and a lot of restaurants, food service, those kind of places. It's a it's a commercial center. It's not really an industrial center, um, and so that's how it it grew up. However, historically, this area is is kind of interesting. We are in what you would have been called the Connecticut Western Preserve, Reserve rather, not Preserve, Reserve. And the Connecticut Western Reserve was a portion <laughs> of a much larger parcel of land um, that was granted to the colony of Connecticut by King Charles II at the time the colony was granted a charter. So it belonged to the colony and later the state of Connecticut. So this was the Connecticut Western Reserve. Well, what this was, was a, the original charter gave them a, a chunk of land, 120 miles wide, roughly the 40, what was it, the 41st to the 42nd and degree and two minute mark, um, all the way across the country. I mean, it, it, it went, uh, yeah. To, to, the, to the Pacific Ocean. That was all Connecticut. They, things were very strange back in the colonial days. I mean, the early colonial, 17th century, um, when, you know, they would grant these huge tracts of land, you know. Louisiana was the entire center of the nation. Uh, West Virginia was, was gargantuous at the time. And in fact, they also claimed to go all the way to the, to the Pacific Ocean at one point. So there was this, this, this tract of land. Well, obviously, you know, with expansion and growth and whatnot, they, they kept having to give things up. And so they eventually were forced by the federal government to give up the, the eastern part that was in Pennsylvania. Like, no, 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 that belongs to William Penn. You've got to give that up. And they reluctantly did. Well, then, in 1786, at the end of the Revolution, either by force or, or willingly, they gave up the western part portions, which incidentally ran across Ohio, Indiana, part of southern Michigan, Illinois, uh, Iowa, Wyoming, Nevada, Utah, and California. I mean, it went all the way out. Well, they ceded a lot of that back to the federal government in return for the federal government absorbing Connecticut's portion of, of the debt for the Revolutionary War. So they said, okay, we'll pay all the Revolutionary War debt, but we want this property. And they went, yeah, all right, fine, it's yours. But they, they held on to this one chunk of land on the, the eastern part of Ohio from roughly the bottom of Lake Erie down to a point down here, like I say 120 miles wide. Um, you know, south of Youngstown and, and Akron along there. So it was about three and a third, a little over three and a third million acres that they held on to 
And then in 1797, at about the time that the Northwest Territory was being formed, they sold it. They sold it to the Connecticut Land Development Company, all right, who was a group of, of pretty wealthy guys, came up with like 1.2 million, roughly, um, to buy this, this uh, like I say, big, you know, millions of acres of land. And uh, they were going to sell it then off to in, uh, investors, uh, smaller investors or settlers who were going to come in from the east. They were planning a lot of development. <clears throat> so they brought in a fellow named Moses Cleveland. Maybe that name sounds familiar. Well, Moses Cleveland was the fellow that the city of Cleveland is named for, and he founded that city at that time. So one of the fellows that uh, bought up a big chunk of this land was a gentleman by the name of Titus Street. Street, like a road, street. And this is where Streetsboro got its name from. And then Street decided to, you know, do the same thing. He divided this chunk that he had bought into 100-acre parcels and proceeded to sell it off. This was a popular way in the developmental part of the country for the rich to become richer. <laughs> they would buy these huge tracts of land. Yeah, it was a huge investment. But when they chopped it up and resold it, it was a much huger return. So uh, Titus Street sold off, you know, this, but... He became the namesake of what is now Streetsboro. So eventually, about 1800, um, Connecticut had to finally say, yeah, okay, we sold this, it's not really under our jurisdiction, and they had to finally cede the jurisdiction to the federal government so that they could form the state of Ohio. <laughs> so at one time, where I'm standing here just off of the Ohio Turnpike in, in northeastern Ohio was in fact part of Connecticut. And uh, Street himself was born and raised in, in Connecticut proper and, and emigrated here. Um, so <laughs> it was uh, kind of a funny thing that this piece of land that's in the Midwest was at one time in the late 18th century and, and, and prior part of Connecticut, which is way over, you know, north of New York City, way over there on the New England coastline up by, uh, by Rhode Island. So, um, a very massive strip of land. 120 miles isn't that wide when you have it, you know, it's 3,000 miles long. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's weird to think that at one time this was part of Connecticut. I, I had never realized that until recently. And I, I thought that was a fascinating little tidbit of uh, land ownership and, and, and transfer and, you know, seeding back to the government and things. You know, that's something that we don't think a lot about that has happened over the years with uh, places like colonies or states owning something and then having to seed it back to the federal government so it can then be given to or incorporated in part of another state. But that's what happened here in Ohio. <coughs> and so... I just thought on this beautiful day, since I happen to be in town, that I would stop and give you that little tidbit of, of history from, from Americana. And I hope you enjoyed that. If you've got questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. I love hearing from all of you. I try to get back to everybody again. If you're new here, well, welcome to the real United States. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you'll consider picking subscribe to come along for the adventure, because we've got lots more to show you. And as always, folks, well, thank you for watching.